49 years old, 20 of them spent married to Ethan. With our son off to college last year, the empty nest had brought both freedom and a part-time job, a necessity to support him. Re-entering the workforce after years as a stay-at-home mom was a challenge, but lately something had shifted. My ideas were valued, my contribution felt. Guess what? I chirped, bursting into the living room where Ethan sat, eyes glued to the TV. They're giving me a small raise. It feels good to be recognized, doesn't it? Ethan grunted a noncommittal response, his gaze never leaving the screen. My cheer faltered. Suddenly, he spoke, his words a jarring switch. So, you're financially independent now? Bewildered, I frowned. What? Where's that coming from? A sly grin spread across his face. Perfect timing, then. Been meaning to tell you. He turned, his eyes gleaming with an unsettling light. I have a girlfriend. Ashley. Younger. Prettier. My breath hitched. A girlfriend? He scoffed. Don't need you anymore. Get the divorce papers tomorrow. Shock numbed me. He wanted a divorce? For this? Ashley? The anger simmered slowly. You found a new woman and suddenly you're a man again? My voice trembled. He sneered. Unlike you, who let yourself go years ago. We haven't been a couple for ages, have we? A truth, yes, but not the whole one. The intimacy had faded, but the blame wasn't mine. Not entirely. Busy, tired, it's a hassle. I mimicked his past excuses, a bitter laugh escaping my lips. Now you're a man? That's rich. His smile faltered, replaced by a grimace. Don't mock me, old lady. Ashley worships the ground I walk on. Best boyfriend ever, she calls me. Look at you, excited about a few pennies more an hour. Pathetic. He launched into a diatribe about Ashley's youthful energy, her vibrant skin, her supposed devotion. Each word felt like a jab. An almost 20-year age gap, a child on the way. The situation was ludicrous. He rattled on, oblivious to my rising fury. Love needs passion, not a moldy rice cake like you. Young, passionate love that justifies spending money. Love bought and paid for? I scoffed internally. He'd traded me for someone blinded by money and willing to overlook his own flaws. Love? I challenged. You mean infatuation with a naive girl after an affair? His face reddened. Love. And I need to marry Ashley. Pronto. Marrying Ashley was his only concern? The audacity was breathtaking. Yet a strange calm settled over me. The love he spoke of had been absent for so long, his words hollow. We sat in silence, the air thick with tension. He expected a fight, a desperate plea. It wouldn't come. He had made his choice, and for the first time I felt strangely free. This wasn't a tragedy. It was an unexpected chance. A chance to rewrite the narrative, to rediscover myself. Ethan might have his Ashley, but I would find my own happily ever after, one built on self-respect and independence, maybe even a career I could truly be passionate about. The thought brought a genuine smile to my face. Ethan might not see it, but a new chapter was beginning, and this one I would write myself. The future Ethan envisioned for himself was clear. Ashley, a younger woman with vibrant skin by his side. He saw me, his wife of 20 years, as nothing more than a faded photograph in the attic. It was laughable, if not downright pathetic. His fleeting infatuation wouldn't last. Time, with its cruel efficiency, would erode the novelty, leaving him with the same hollowness he felt with me. And, just like me, Ashley would eventually become the target of his barbs. The audacity of his insults stung, but a deeper realization dawned. Throughout our marriage, he'd offered no help with the household or our son. My tireless efforts were met with silence not appreciation. Now, he discarded me like last season's clothes. Fine, I said, devoid of emotion. We'll file the papers. His smugness vanished as quickly as it appeared. He'd expected a fight, a desperate last stand. Instead, I projected an unsettling calm. The following day, he brought Ashley over. Here to help with the paperwork, she chirped, her voice dripping with saccharine sweetness. She sprawled on the sofa, a stark contrast to my years spent diligently cleaning and maintaining our home. Her clothes screamed for attention, an absurdly low neckline and a skirt so short it defied convention. My intuition screamed gold digger. Ashley, right? I said, meeting her gaze. 
Were you aware Ethan was married when you started seeing him? A forced laugh escaped her lips. Don't underestimate me, old lady. This marriage is over. You're toast. She spoke with a confidence that seemed borrowed, a facade to mask deeper insecurities. Glad you cleared that up, I said, pulling out a voice recorder, because that little confession can be very valuable in court. Ashley's eyes widened in alarm. She whined to Ethan, You told me she wouldn't cause any trouble. He scoffed, but a flicker of worry betrayed his facade. Don't worry, Ashley. I've got everything under control. Their sickeningly sweet exchange continued as Ethan presented divorce papers. Alimony, property division, all generously weighted in his favor. Ashley piped up. Wait, you're giving her $230,000? That's a huge chunk of my inheritance. Her mask slipped completely. It wasn't love that drew her to Ethan. It was greed. Her inheritance was now the prize. Don't worry, darling, Ethan cooed, oblivious to her true motives. This includes child support, too. I fought back a surge of anger. With minimal words, I proposed, If you're comfortable putting these terms in a notarized document with a lump sum payment, I've got a proposition for you, Ethan. I'll sign these papers, but on one condition. You cover my legal fees and provide a significant contribution to a college fund for our son. Ethan, desperate to appease both of us, readily agreed. As he signed, Ashley sulked, her gold-digging dreams diminishing with each stroke of the pen. The woman who entered my home as a victor left defeated. She wasn't the enemy. My true adversary was the man who couldn't see past his own shallow desires. This experience was a wake-up call. My strength didn't lie in a man who didn't appreciate me. It resided within myself. The future I envisioned was no longer defined by a failing marriage. It was a blank canvas, waiting for me to paint my own masterpiece. The path ahead wouldn't be easy. Raising a child as a single mother would be challenging, but it wouldn't be a burden. It would be an opportunity to forge a deeper bond with my son. Perhaps I could even return to school, something I'd always dreamed of but put on hold for the sake of my family. My professional life might not have taken off yet, but it wasn't too late to start anew. Suddenly, the future felt full of possibilities. A smile tugged at my lips. Ethan might have his Ashley, but I had the unwavering love of my son and the exciting prospect of rediscovering myself. And that, I realized, was a far more valuable prize. Out by the end of the month, my ex-husband declared, his voice dripping with finality. I'm canceling my current place. His new girlfriend, Ashley, sat beside him, a smirk playing on her lips. Fine, I said, my voice betraying none of the turmoil within. Once the divorce papers are finalized, I'll be gone. Ashley's smirk faltered, replaced by a disgruntled pout. She stormed out, leaving an uncomfortable silence in her wake. The divorce was swift, hastened by the eager Ashley. No sooner had the ink dried than she reappeared, this time with a triumphant air. Time to pack your bags, old lady, she crowed, grabbing the keys from my hand. This house is mine now. I resisted the urge to roll my eyes. Isn't Ethan a little mature for your taste? I couldn't resist a dig. He's practically your parents' age. Ashley bristled. Details. He's a divisional manager with a top company and look at this house. Renovated, close to the station. I'm redecorating, of course. Her voice dripped with a materialistic vision of her future. Ethan promises me anything I want, she continued, a smug smile contorting her features. A fairy tale life. I fought back a sigh. Best of luck with that, I said, exiting the house that had been my home for so many years. My path forward wasn't glamorous. I found refuge in a university dorm, taking a job as a live-in dorm mother. A rare opportunity these days. My previous experience working part-time in a company cafeteria had paid off. The cafeteria manager, impressed with my work ethic, had connected me with the university when she heard about my situation. My nutritionist certification came in handy, and the dorm provided a comfortable, affordable living space. While free time was scarce, the job was fulfilling. The constant interaction with young students kept me energized, and their youthful spirit was contagious. I found myself reminiscing about my own college days, the dreams I'd put on hold to raise a family. After three months of this new life, a phone call shattered my newfound peace. Your mother-in-law. 
Ethan's voice rasped through the phone. She's not well. Can you help? Strangers now, remember? I countered, my tone firm. Ashley's the young wife, isn't she? A pause. Ashley's pregnant, he mumbled. Your mother-in-law has dementia. And throws things, I finished for him. But it's okay if she throws them at me. Nice logic. There was a defeated sigh on the other end. We have nothing to do with each other, I declared, hanging up. Twenty years of strained cordiality didn't translate to immediate caregiving. Then, one day, they appeared at my dorm, Ethan and Ashley, their faces etched with desperation. If you won't help, Ashley spat, give us back the money. The consolation money, I raised an eyebrow, amusement flickering in my eyes. Think you're owed something? They stormed towards me, a flurry of accusations. The inheritance, there isn't any. We're in debt. You assumed, I shrugged. Turns out my late father-in-law left quite a mountain of debt. We could have disclaimed the inheritance, Ethan roared. Except, I interrupted, a small smile playing on my lips. You didn't follow protocol. Ethan canceled his father's phone contract and sold valuables. Touching the assets before disclaiming invalidates the process. As the weight of their predicament settled on them, Ashley's face crumpled. Ethan, however, looked strangely relieved. Debt is yours then, I declared, a newfound sense of empowerment coursing through me. Leaving them to their fate, I turned and walked back towards the dorm, a spring in my step. This wasn't the future I envisioned, but it was mine. I had a job I enjoyed, a roof over my head, and most importantly, my independence. The life Ethan and Ashley pursued might look glamorous on the surface, but I wouldn't trade my newfound freedom for their gilded cage. They had each other, their debt, and a bleak reality waiting for them. As for me, I had the open road ahead, ready to forge my own path, one filled with possibilities. The mountain of inheritance paperwork Ethan dumped on the table spoke volumes. He hadn't bothered to listen to a single word I said. Ashley, I finally choked out, my gaze burning into the woman beside him. You used that money to keep seeing Ethan, didn't you? She paled, the color draining from her face. Ethan started to bluster, but I cut him off. This is on both of you. You never listened when you needed to, and now you're both facing the consequences. Take some responsibility. I... I didn't know anything about it, Ashley stammered, her voice barely a whisper. Convenient, I scoffed. Pretend ignorance and run away with the money? That's your plan? They pressed me, desperate for a solution, but I held firm. Funny, isn't it? I said, a wry smile playing on my lips. If you hadn't been cheating, Ethan wouldn't have needed to drain your inheritance for his little fling. You created this mess. Ethan mumbled a defeated groan, his shoulders slumping. You knew he was married, Ashley, I continued, my voice firm. You chased him for his money, had a child, then kicked me out. You wanted this life, didn't you? The girl, barely older than my son, looked at me with wide, panicked eyes. If I had known how this would end, I wouldn't have bothered with this old man, she mumbled, her voice laced with regret. There was more I wanted to say. Did she remember the notarized divorce agreement? Alimony, pension division, and child support all secured my financial security. But there was more. You see, I said, my voice low and steady, besides the agreed-upon alimony, you can also be held liable for additional compensation due to your involvement in the breakdown of the marriage. Ashley's eyes widened in disbelief. $230,000 already wasn't good enough? She shrieked. You're greedy! I might have let it go, I countered, but you kept pushing your luck. Now, here we are. Pulling out my phone, I revealed a recording of our previous conversation about alimony. Her bravado crumbled, and without a word, she turned and fled. Ethan remained rooted to the spot, a picture of utter despair. But she's pregnant, he stammered, his voice cracking. How can she leave now? Is she really? I questioned, a flicker of doubt crossing my mind. And where exactly is the love you said you had for her? Ethan gasped, a haunted look in his eyes. I was wrong. Jessica, please come back, he pleaded, tears welling up. But I wouldn't budge. He didn't deserve sympathy. Just as I suspected, Ashley vanished, leaving nothing but a hastily filed divorce notice behind.
Her pregnancy, it seemed, was a carefully constructed lie. Ethan was left alone, buried under debt and the burden of caring for his ailing mother. The stress and exhaustion took their toll, and he quickly aged into a pale shadow of his former self. Meanwhile, I blossomed. Working as a dorm mother for children the same age as my son filled a void I hadn't realized existed. The constant energy of the young residents kept me moving, and their dreams and aspirations were contagious. I began to see the world through fresh eyes, remembering the dreams I'd put aside for so long. This experience, painful as it was, had freed me. I was no longer defined by Ethan's betrayal or Ashley's deceit. I had learned to live authentically, without arrogance or manipulative schemes. My advice? When navigating divorce, proceed with caution. Some wounds require a clean break for true healing to begin. And trust me, the freedom found on the other side is worth the temporary pain. Perhaps when the dust settles, you'll find yourself, like me, rediscovering a passion you thought long lost. The road ahead might be uncertain, but with newfound independence and a heart open to possibilities, you can build a future far brighter than anything your past could offer.